Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Sysmon tracking process creation. So why is process creation tracking so important? That is one of the first things that we're going to try to cover. After that, we're going to be focusing on what are the different fields that Sysmon actually tracks or logs when it comes to process creation, which is going to be event ID number one. And what does it track for process termination, event ID number five, and what is it important that we track both of those. Then we're going to move over into what is the process good? Why is the process good so awesome? And then I'm going to be moving over to what are some of the best practices and some of the ways that you can actually log uh, process creation and process termination. So let's get to it. So when we're talking about process creation, one of the main reasons that we want to track this type of event is that when we look at MITRE ATT&CK framework and we look at the different data sources, one of them is going to be process and we're going to have process creation, process metadata. And as you can see in the information there that MITRE makes available to us, those are tracked via security ID 4688. In addition to that, we have the command line execution also tracked by this event. In the case of Sysmon, Sysmon provides us the same type of information but it actually enhances that with additional metadata that we can use as we're tracking actors as they're executing stuff in our systems. Uh, when we look, for example, at what are the major data sources per technique, one of the things that we're going to notice is that command execution and process creation amount to most of the sub techniques when it comes to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So this means that by just having command execution and process creation, we're able to actually track a large gamut of behavior that an attacker can actually be taken on our systems. So this is quite important. This is great for us. Now, when we take a look at what Sysmon's actually logging on a system, uh, this enhanced metadata that I've been talking about is going to be, we're going to have the image the file version description, product company, original file name. So we have a bunch of metadata of this process that is part of the information that is stored on disk. Now, some of this information also includes the original file name. So if somebody actually renames one of these executables, we can take a look at what was the original file name of that executable before it was renamed that's actually saved inside of the metadata of the file itself. Now, this is very good because we can identify if the file was copied from another version of Windows, brought over, what is the company that created the file. And I know uh, some of this stuff can be actually manipulated and it can be hidden. Uh, now, when we look at the execution itself, we're going to have two very important pieces of information that I believe are going to be the most useful for you. We're going to have the parent image information, which, which is the process that started this process. And then we're going to have all of the information of the process itself. When it comes to the process itself, we're going to have the command line for both the parent and the child. This is very useful for us because it, it allows us to match specifically on that parent inf if information when we want to exclude normal behavior in the environment. In addition to that, it will give us a clue for malicious behavior um, from where that execution actually came from. And what is the context of that execution? In addition to that, we're going to have the logon ID, terminal session, the integrity level, the user that executed that. Now, when it comes to an attacker and if they want to hide and they want to use something like the Cobalt Strike um, artifact kit, and they want to hide their information for the command line, they're not able to mimic all of the different fields that we see here. In addition to that, if they want to match the user, the parent process, child process, command line, and integrity level, that means that they really, really, really need to do a ton of work that is going to get them detected just to position themselves in that place where they can actually take that action. In addition to that, we're going to have hashes for the image itself. This allows us to use data from uh, threat intelligence services if we want to look for known malicious activities 
or now with those hashes, we can use that to track execution across our environment. So as you can see, it actually provides a very large gamut of information. Now, when it comes to process termination, the information is a bit more limited. When it comes to event ID number five, process termination, what we're going to actually be having is that we're going to have only the process GUID, the process ID, the image, and the user. So we're a bit limited there, but I have some recommendations for you that I think you're going to like when it comes to tracking process termination. Now we are seeing everywhere this thing called a process GUID. That process GUID is actually created by when the process gets started, Sysmon is going to look for the timestamp of that process. It is going to pull the machine GUID from the registry. That's part of the unique GUID for each system that is used for cryptographic functions inside of Windows. And it's going to pull the process start key, which should be a unique value per process on the host, according to MSDN, which that's a bit more entropy for that GUID to be unique. And the reason that we have this GUID is because process IDs actually get reused when a process gets created. Now, this GUID is super useful to us because all of a sudden, this GUID is used across multiple data sources inside of Sysmon. So it's not only used for processes, it's used for file actions, it's used for the clipboard, it's used for the network, it's used for registry actions, and that good is going to be referenced across a bunch of sub behaviors for each one of these data sources. So all of a sudden it is being used for name pipes, for when a file is created, for when a file is terminated, when we load an image, when a process access another process, we are going to use that in the case of files, when a file gets created, deleted, if somebody's doing a shredding, that's going to be used there. In the case of a clipboard, who put the data in the clipboard itself. Now, we also have the logging GUID, which is also unique for the machine that we can use to track specific GUID if we want to track all of the different actions for that user. And that actually uses the timestamp, the machine GUID, and the logon ID to create a unique GUID value that we can also use when we're working with this series of events. Now, for recommendations. It's going to be that we have two different approaches. First approach is going to be where we exclude all known good behavior, and then we log the rest, which is the, in my opinion, the best approach, where I'm going to do all of my detections on my SIM, and I'm going to handle those over there. And it adds that capability that if something new happens since I'm already excluding all of the known behavior, it's going to be a lot easier for me to find new behavior that just surface across all of my historical data that I have already archived in my SIM. Now I know storage is expensive. And even if we do that and we're reducing the amount of data that we're logging in, that's still going to be very expensive for us in terms of just simple disk storage. Now, one of the things that we can do is that we can do all of our targeting and all of our detections in addition to our exclusions in the Sysmon configuration itself. Now we're adding a bit more burden on the system in terms of performance, memory use, but I'm saving storage on the other side. I'm going to have a less signal to noise ratio, but if new behavior surfaces, I'm going to then be constantly looking at threat Intel data and then writing all of those new rules. There are going to be more gaps but I'm going to be saving on the other side storage space. So uh, yeah, it's a balancing act. Now, one of the things that you may ask, hey, Carlos, how do I'm going to do all of those excludes? Because excludes are still on both sides and we're excluding all of that known behavior. So we get a better signal to noise ratio. Well, when we look at that, the, the way I recommend this is to log and say and use PS Gumshoe in this case to save all of the information for a known good host that you have in your environment, what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be grabbing the user, the parent command line, and the command line that your uh, process data is providing you. We're going to be saving all of that stuff into a variable, and I'm going to be doing a unique. The advantage of doing the unique is that this data is going to be less. If I don't do unique in the case of PowerShell, I'm going to have way too much data to sort 
through. In fact, if you want to reduce the amount of data that you're going to be processing, I can actually just go into the VM itself here and I can do process creation data and then I can just do out grid view. So I can take a look in kind of like a spreadsheet type of GUI. Uh, what is the information that I have here? I can select the data that I want and I can export that either to the command line or I can even export it into a CSV. Or if I prefer, I can also do uh, export CSV and I can specify a file. So I can say process data.csv and that data is going to be saved into a CSV file that then I can open with. So we're going to grab that CSV data, we're going to delete data from it, and we're going to reduce that signal to noise ratio that we have there even further. And I can just import that CSV. And one of the things I can do, and this is where the magic comes from PS Gumshoe, I can just do process creation. And I can just do sysmon rule. And what is going to happen is that I'm already going to be creating compound rules for each one of those known behavior. And since I'm including multiple fields, it's going to be a total nightmare for an attacker to actually match all of that. Okay, so now let's create a simple configuration file that we can deploy and then fine tune as we gather more information. So right now, this configuration file, I have the latest version of this schema hash algorithm 256. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a comment for file creation. I'm going to, for process creation, sorry, process creation. And then what I'm going to set this is I'm going to create a rule group for this file type. So I'm going to do control I and rule group. I'm going to call this process creation. I'm going to set the relationship to an or. I'm going to now create the event type, which is process creation. And in this case, I'm going to do an exclusion. So that way I can keep tuning this where I'm excluding most of all of the noise in the environment. And one of the best sources for creating a simple initial configuration is going to be Olaf's modular Sysmon. So I'm gonna come here. I'm going to look at the different data that he has for each one of the event types. And I'm going to go for process creation, which is going to be event type number one. So here we go, process creation. And what I'm going to be excluding initially is going to VSVC host. So let's take a look here. I want to filter all of the SVC host service information. Here we go. Exclude SVC host. I can grab all of this information right here for process create for the exclusion. I can add that to mine. He has it very well commented. Uh, document it with comments, which is awesome. I'm gonna go here. I'm going to paste that information. And now I have a simple exclude that I can add and just keep fine tuning. Now I need to also do process termination. So the way I'm going to do process termination is I'm going to create another rule group and I'm going to Start first with a comment. The comment is going to be for process termination. I'm going to create a rule group. Now this rule group I'm going to say is process termination. Group relationship is going to be set to or, so now that I have my process termination event type created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into all of Sysmon modular. And the one that I want you guys to actually use is going to be include uncommon locations. 
The main reason that I like this one is that these are all of the different places where a user can dump a file on disk and then execute it. And also some of those locations that it's going to be weird for somebody to be running like WW root and also locations where a user may download a file and execute that file as part of a phishing attack. So I like this one because it gives me quite a bit of good coverage. I'm just going to copy this information here. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to paste this information here in the configuration. Now that I have this pasted, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Visual Studio Code's uh, multi-cursor to just simply remove the entries for the MITRE ATT&CK framework. I don't need this ones because I just rather not have them for this event type. So one of the things I can actually do is just remove those here. And the way I would do that is just select each one by pressing the Alt key and just selecting the cursor. And then I can just delete those entries. Now what I have is a simple configuration file that I can leverage for all of my process tracking leveraging Sysma. Now my recommendation is to look at current threat intel data as it relates to your business. Who are the attackers? What are their techniques? What are their TTPs that they're employing against businesses like yours or in your same market? Emulate those attacks and then look what your current endpoint security solutions are tracking, what they're missing, and then that will help you prioritize what am I going to cover with Sysmon if I'm going to the road where I'm going to have all of my detections with Sysmon. And then you go into a project like Sysmon Modular from Olaf and you start going through the different recommendations that he has there. Or I'm going to then write all of those detections into my SIM to have better coverage. And probably we're going to find some areas where I'm going to fine tune this better in my EDR that I'm going to do in Sysmon. And it will give you kind of like an idea of how to create that roadmap that you want to follow there. Now, I hope that you have found this video useful and it provided you the foundation for you to go through that thought process on deciding what type of approach am I going to take with process creation and what type of rules am I going to be creating and testing for my Sysmon config for my environment. Again, thank you and remember to like and subscribe.